Good morning. morning. Welcome to uh, Calvary on this Lord's Day. We'd like to welcome Pam Fox Levy to the altar this morning to do our service, and we will certainly do that when she arrives. (laughs) Until then, the uh, choir is going to sing as slowly as possible, and we're going to. Yeah, we've done this before. Um, we're going to be retiring the cross this morning, and we had asked anyone who wanted to bring up flowers to, to uh, cover the, the cross. It looks awesome, and we will be doing that today. Anyone that still has flowers to bring up, please feel free to do that. Can you hear me? We okay? Yes. All right. What's that? Janet can't hear. can't hear. All right. I will speak louder. Uh, next week, we're going to be doing a hymn sing. Okay, so everybody, uh, please be here for that. No communion. No communion. No communion next week. So um, we need to have all the children sign up for VBS, which is uh, July 31st to August 4th here at the church. So uh, all of us with small children, please have them all sign up in advance so that we have a good uh, turnout, which we always do. And last, we need to have, we're, we're asking for help with regards to counters. Um, we, were, we, we had always had the same rotation of a few people who did help us out as far as being counters at the end of the worship service after church and, and even the next day on Monday, whatever is convenient. But we are now... Uh, without really much help as far as counters go. And, and we're asking that if anybody uh, would like to do that, it's, it's not a cumbersome job. It doesn't take very long. Uh, but we need a few people that are consistently here that can do that on a regular basis. Um, and if, if, if there's anyone that would like to help and, and contribute to that, please talk to Bobby Beck. She'll be glad to put you to work like the rest of us. Let us worship God. something in a, right after the call to worship uh, and tell you a little bit more about the cross. Okay, the bulletin, the call to worship is in the bulletin. Early in the morning, our thoughts turn toward God. We have been led to this mountaintop of worship. We, we come trusting God's, God's death death death. Death. We gather, seeking seeking the way of salvation salvation and peace. God has made an everlasting covenant with us. Let us proclaim God's faithfulness to all generations. Sometimes we think God has forgotten us. Often we do not understand what God expects of us. God deals bountifully with us in much that we take for granted. God shows us the value of life and helps us celebrate it. We bring our sorrow and pain to this healing time. May God provide what we need to grow in Christ. Our gathering hymn is 103, Ye Servants of God, Your Master.
the retirement of the cross is something new for our church, but it's not for the church that Dorothy went to for a long time in Washington, D.C. So she's going to tell you a little bit more about the reason for this. Maybe you didn't even notice that for the past months over here in the corner, there has been a wooden cross in our church. Maybe you're thinking, oh, they just never got around to putting that thing away. Uh-uh, no. If you've been watching it carefully, you've seen it change during the months that it's been here. When it first arrived for Ash Wednesday, it was draped in purple. Do you know why it was draped in purple? What does purple symbolize? Anybody know? Royalty, royalty, and the coming of what we knew was uh, what, we, what we were awaiting on uh, the resurrection on Easter Sunday. So purple, it was purple all along. And then on Maundy Thursday, if you were here for that service, you noticed there was nothing draped on it. And in fact, when that service ended, there were no candles, there was no music. In silence, we just walked out of the church. In churches where there is a, a Good Friday service, um, it appears draped in black, draped in black to symbolize the crucifixion. And then on Easter Sunday, you may have seen it draped in white cloths. And the choir was wearing their white stoles, and we had white cloths here on the, on the front of the church, white for life. Well, in the church that I went to for many, many years, we added one more touch. During the Easter service, at any time during the service, while it was during the singing of the hymns, or if you were just sitting there in a moment of meditation, people would come up and bring flowers from their garden or flowers from the grocery store and just tuck them in. We've got lots of extra flowers in here. If you would like to come up at some point during the service and find a place to just stick them in, you're welcome to. But look at it now. Look how beautiful it is. It is a living cross. And now it symbolizes our living faith. So please do come up and help us decorate this beautiful symbol. And then we will retire it for the summer. OK. Please join me, we're going to do corporate confession together, followed by a moment of silent confession. Eternal God, our judge and redeemer, we confess that we have tried to hide from you, for we have done wrong. We have lived for ourselves and apart from you. We have turned from our neighbors and refused to bear the burdens of others. We have ignored the pain of the world and passed by the hungry the poor, and the oppressed. In your great mercy, forgive our sins and free us from selfishness, that we may choose your will and obey your commandments through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Friends, believe the good news of the gospel. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. This is the time in our service where we give back just a portion of the gifts that we have received in our lives on this earth.
Good morning. Um, boy, we're really winging it today, but it's kind of cool. <laughs> um, hope Pam is safe. Um, so this is the time where we're going to uh, uh, share our joys and concerns. So does anybody have a, uh, a joy or a concern they'd like to share? You can't hear me, Grammy? Okay. Um, can we turn me up, maybe? I can hear me fine. You, you got something? No. Okay. Drums. You got, well, yeah. Um, anybody have a joy or concern they'd like to share? Yes? No? I know, I'm trying to get the, the folks out. There's always stuff behind me. <laughs> no? Okay. We got Scott. Okay. My uh, joy is uh, I'm, uh, I've retired from my job as a janitor for OTC at the uh, Hughes Building up in Trenton uh, Friday, late last week, and I'm going to be enjoying my retirement and spending more time with my roommate. Anybody else? That's kind of a lean say. Well, I got one. What the heck? Um, Wait a minute. Oh, we got You're jumping the gun. I, I, I have to say that the, this, this particular service is very joyful. We have so many people in here that just keep tap dancing. Um, the, every time there's, there's something that's thrown, you know, from, from left field, people step up and they take it on. And I thank God for the people in this church. Um, so I have a joy. I'm just flying today. Um, oh. Pam, I love you. <laughs> Yo, I had a whole sermon prepared, I swear. <laughs> well, maybe, maybe not. Um, so I have a joy. Uh, I've been flying since, uh, uh, just emotionally, since Thursday. Um, this anthem we're doing today is just, it's, it's joyful. Um, yeah, thanks. Well, so I didn't want to give it all away. <laughs> Um, so, uh, I just, uh, you know, to, to piggyback on Laura, um, this church is so blessed with so many people that just um, are willing to wing it. Um, and God's got his hand all over this place. It is so, so evident. So, um, uh, just wanted to share that. Um, can we pray, please? <sighs> Father God, you are just so, so amazing. Um, so upfront. Um, uh, we are just so blessed here to have, um, again, the folks um, that you put here, our village, to, um, to try to live who you are, uh, to try to um, show the rest of the world, show the community, show each other uh, that you are, in fact, up front for us in our lives. So we are, uh, we are so thankful for that. Um, uh, congratulations to Scott, who's finally retired. Um, uh, that's such a blessing. Um, continue, to, continue to be evident here. Um, continue to be with uh, the group that's uh, doing the pastor search right now. Um, it's a real, real exciting time for us. And, and again, uh, your presence is so evident uh, there as well. So. Uh, continue to bless us. Uh, uh, let's join together in the Lord's Prayer. <clears throat> Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not to temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
Thank you for your patience with me. I was very sick this morning, and I still push myself through to come today. So I'm excited to be here, and I thank God for lightening my migraine a little bit this morning. Um, but I'm super excited to share his word with you this morning. But I want to start us off in a prayer before I get started. Um, please bow your heads with me. Dear precious and heavenly Father, I thank you so much for this day. Thank you for all of us having the activity of our limbs and being our right sound body and mind. But most of all, I ask, Lord, in this moment that you would increase in me and that your, your Holy Spirit will dwell in me, that the word may go forth and that someone may seek salvation, have breakthrough or feel your peace in Jesus' name. Amen. This morning as I was preparing my sermon, to think, when I was thinking about how I would come up, uh, before you this morning, um, immediately this morning, I wasn't feeling well, so I knew that the enemy did not want me to speak today because this is for someone. And I want to say that this, this sermon means so much to me today because I need to also hear what this sermon has to say too. The sermon title today is, Whose Report Will You Believe? How many times have you turned on the television and you saw negative media, negative information, or how many times have you gotten re reports that were not positive and you felt down? The world bombards us every day with fear and with doubt and despair. But Isaiah says in 53.1, Isaiah framed it perfectly. Who has believed our report? And to the arm of the Lord revealed, we need to choose to believe. The scripture says in Jeremiah 29, 11, for I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord, is for a hope and for a future. Today, I want to talk a little bit about Lazarus. You see, before I get into that, I want to share with you what is a report. A report is an analysis or impact of an event. It's an evaluation of facts and data that's collected. It's predictions of what might happen as a result of an event. It's a recommendation of a next course of action. And it also provides a conclusion. But what a report doesn't necessarily sometimes provide is the Jesus factor, the addendum. You see, imagine this story. There you are. Your brother is dying. He needs to be healed. And you know the very one person that can do that. And you're calling out for Jesus, and he's not there. You're calling out for Jesus, and your brother dies. You're all weeping and you're mourning because you knew the very friend that you had who had the anointing power could heal your brother but he was not there. And then the divine shows up. And the divine looks at your brother, and he looks at all of you, and he sees you're weeping. What do you do? Well, I want to share a couple more examples, and I'm going to get into the text. Think about Sarah in the Bible. Sarah was told that she was going to bear a child in old age, and she laughed. She's like, oh, are you serious? Really? Daniel was in the lion's den. His report said... He should die because he's in the lion's den with a lion, you see. The Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, their report said they should be burnt up in the fiery furnace. And Jesus, by medical science, should have died on that cross and not got back up. <laughs> My grandmother, who was in a hospital, had a stroke. And a doctor told her after her mouth twisted she'd never be able to talk normal again. But in 20 minutes with her God praying, her mouth untwisted. And the doctors didn't understand. They said, well, my gosh, this is a, miracle, a medical miracle. And she said, all I need is 20 minutes with my God. I don't need to listen to your report. I know who I serve. So what does your report say? Are you facing illness? Have you lost your job? Are you facing a divorce? Does the doctor say you won't make it? Is your credit report saying you can't buy a home? Does your salary say you can't pay the mortgage? And does your spouse not see you? Are you dealing with depression, or do you feel hopeless? Let me tell you something. Are you like Sarah, who defied all odds of science, <laughs> and the math isn't adding up, or do you feel in despair? Let me just say this. 
I want to say that one of my favorite pastors says this, this verse, this, this uh, thought. He says, when it comes to a bad report, don't nurse it. Don't rehearse it. Reverse it. A God's, God's report is a good report. When we hear bad reports ahead coming all the time from the media, but you don't have to believe it. Negative thoughts can be imprison you. God doesn't want us to be, think about the negative things or what's before us because he asks us to walk in faith. He is your God, and he will meet our needs. The enemy comes to steal, kill, and imprison us and make us feel despair. But take hold of your thoughts and replace them with God's truth, God's report. God didn't bring us this far to leave us. He didn't put us in a house and leave us there. He never leaves us. Sometimes we desert him. Believe the report of the Lord. For the words will be for your words will be justifi- justified and your words will be, con- will be condemned, Matthew 12, 37. Your life is a product of your words. When Adam decided to take on the act of the serpent, words in the Garden of Eden, he was a slave to Satan. Adam lost his fellowship, and with God, he also had to live life with hard labor and die prematurely. Satan has been blinding people ever since. He's trying to convince God's people that the word isn't true. As a result, we have been living subject to poverty, sickness, and spiritual death. Jesus came that we might have prosperity and that we might have health and eternal life. But the road to Jesus Christ has paid is that we have to believe in his report, in his word, in his promises. So I ask you the question, whose report do you believe? Your report will determine what you do. My second point is faith. Your faith can move the tomb. When Jesus shows up with Mary and Martha, they were devastated. So was Jesus. He wept. He loved Lazarus. Jesus loved him so much. I want to read a little bit of the scripture. When Mary, when Mary reached the place where Jesus, she saw him and she fell at his feet and said, Lord, if you had been here, My brother would have not died. I'm going to skip to verse 40. He said, then Jesus said, did I tell you that if you believe, you will see the glory of God? God is saying that we have to believe so we can see the glory of God. He even says that to them. If you believe, you will see the glory of God. And when he went to the tomb, I want to talk about what happens when he went to the tomb. Jesus once morely moved And came to the tomb. It was a cave with a stone laid across the entrance. He says, take away that stone. But Lord, the sister said, he's a dead man. It's time. It's got a bad odor. He said, take it away. Jesus looked up and said, Father, I thank you. You have heard me. I knew that you always hear me. But I said this for their benefit of the people. Standing here that they may believe you sent me. When he said this, Jesus called with a loud voice, Lazarus come out. But the dead man came out. His hands and feet were wrapped with stripes of lemon and cloth around his face. And Jesus said to them, take off the grave clothes and let him go. God wants us to walk in faith. He says, take off those grave clothes. When we accepted Jesus Christ as our personal savior, we left behind those grave clothes. And he says, now go and walk. Go, be free. Believe. The Lord is saying to all his report, all of the reports we see are just temporary. The Bible says in the book of Romans chapter 12, verses 2, Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you'll be able to test and approve what God's will is good, pleasing in his perfect will. Part of this journey of the report is not just believing, but it's transform, transforming our mind and our thoughts as believers. Because when we were in that old body, we thought different ways. But when you're transformed by the renewal of your mind, you understand and you see these promises. So when you get that report, it doesn't matter what's on that piece of paper or what they say on the media. Because you know who God is in you and your life. The Bible says, now faith is confidence in what we hope for and assurance of what we do not see. Hebrews 11.1 Therefore, I tell you, whatever you ask in prayer, believe that you have received it and it will be yours. Mark 11.24 Whose report will you believe? The Bible says, and without faith, it is impossible to please, anyone, please God because anyone who comes to him must believe 
that he exists and that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. So he goes to Mary again. I will say this again. He says to Mary and Martha, did I tell you that if you believe, you will see the glory? God is saying here, if we believe, we will see the glory. Get out of your tomb. Take off those grave clothes. Renew your mind so that God can help you get past that bad report. God is so good, he gives us the best report. He says, by his stripes, we can be healed. It's not only our report, but it is our battle cry. We declare that our struggles will not define us, but they will refine us. So, Psalms 1, 1 through 2 says, Who has believed that report? And to whom the arms of the Lord has been revealed? Peter 2, 24 says, He himself bore our sins in his body in the tree, that we have died in sins, might live righteously. We are healed by his wounds. Again, I surely say to you, we have what we need. We have each other. God tells us to come together as the body of Christ to pray for one another. He says, ask again, and surely I tell you, if two or three are gathered in my name concerning anything they ask, it shall be done for them by the Father who is in heaven. For where there are two or three gathered in my name, I am in the middle of them also. Just remember who God is in us. God can bring on opportunities on our paths, on our paths and take us to another level, but we must believe. We can't look at the, the reports of the world. We have to keep our eyes focused on him. So whose report do you believe? We shall believe in the report of the Lord. Remember that we have authority that's been given to us, and Jesus has given us authority over the power of the enemy, and nothing shall in any way harm us. Luke chapter 10, verses 17 through 19. John tells us, in the book of John 14, uh, 12 through 14, tells us believers will do the works that Jesus did, even greater works than Jesus did now with the Father. So whose report do you believe? God can turn any situation around. The Bible says, weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. He can literally turn it around. So whose report do you believe? The last part of this is that I feel I want to say that leads me to the last part is the Jesus factor. First of all, we talked in the beginning, we talked about how we need to make sure we know what God has done. He gave us a history of his reports. I gave you the history. Secondly, I told you what you need to have to overcome the bad reports, which is faith. The last part you need to remember is the Jesus factor. When Jesus shows up on the scene, everything can be transformed and changed in the twinkling of an eye. The doctor's report, your credit report, your report card, the news, the people, God can change it in just a quick circumstance. What if David chose to believe the report that he couldn't slay that giant? God has been preparing him in the field. He had a relationship with God. God has a relationship with us. So there's nothing too big that God can't handle, even in your report. The report report you believe determines, again, what you will do. So what will you choose to believe? So we have to wake up and we have to submit and surrender our report to God so that we can trust the Lord to provide our path. Whose report will you believe? We will believe the report of the Lord. We will believe his promises that he's given to us. You're not the same that you were when you received Jesus. You're not the same you were were before in your sinner body. In your saintly body, you have his promises on the inside that can direct you, the Holy Spirit. There's a song out there that says this. I want, I'm not a singer, but I want to sing a little bit of it to you. It's an old school song, I think it came out in the 80s when I was born, uh, that my grandma used to play growing up when I was a kid. <clears throat> I'm not going to sing it because I'm not feeling what's today. I'm going to read the words. Whose report will you believe? We shall believe the report of the Lord. Whose report shall you believe? We shall believe the report of the Lord. His report says I am healed. His report says I am filled. His report says I am free. His report says we have victory. Whose report will you believe? We shall believe in the report of the Lord.
So I ask you today, whose report shall you believe? And I share this song. This song is powerful because it hits all the major points that Jesus has done for us. He has healed us. He has filled us with his Holy Spirit. He set us free on the cross. And he says we have the victory. We already win. In the book of Romans chapter 8, verses 37, it says, Yet in all these things we are more than conquerors through Christ Jesus. He says you already have the victory. Who cares what that report says? God says you have the victory. And whatever you still have to go through, he says, I will never leave you nor forsake you. So whose report shall you believe? We shall believe in the report of the Lord. Thank you so much. Before we go on to the next thing, um, life is so precious, and this is an appointed time for God's people to really believe and trust Him and have faith. There are a lot of people who are broken and hurt out there who need to see the Savior, and sometimes they will not see the Savior but through us. Because some people will never read the Bible, but you may be the only Bible that someone may read. It is important that we show them the right report. It's important that we show them the right tools to get to Jesus. So I don't know why I was feeling so bad this morning. And I don't know why this sermon was so pressed in my heart. But I want someone out there to know that God is on your side and that his report is going to be so much greater than what you've been seeing. And I know I'm out of line for saying that in this moment. And there's other things we need to get to. But I just want to take a moment to acknowledge God's presence and his love for all of us. But particularly those who are lost and who don't know him. So if you know someone who doesn't have Jesus in their life, please encourage him about the good report. And the good report is the gospel of Jesus Christ. It's the one thing that binds us all together as the body of Christ and his humanity, is the love that God shed on Calvary for all of us. So let us make sure that we believe in that good report and we share with everybody. Bad reports, people love to talk about bad things, but let's talk about the good things, which is that report of God and the promises that he has over our lives, which the promises over our lives are so many and numerous. We don't, have a, we don't have enough time to count. So I just want to encourage all of us to live out that good report. Thank you. And let me catch back to the service. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. We're now going to have our closing hymn, um, number 107, Christ Be My Leader.
thank you for your love and kindness towards us. And we thank you that we will believe your good report and that we will take the charge to those all around us. May you be with us and may you keep us in perfect peace. Amen. Thank <laughs> you.